Hi, my name is Laulin, and in this video I would like to talk about the Ethernet peripheral found on the high-end versions of Renesis' newest microcontroller family, the RA. In this block diagram we can see the RA6M3 group. The RA6M3 includes the Cortex-M4 CPU core with up to 120 MHz frequency. Operating from 2.7 to 3.6 volts, the RA6M3 is offered with flash sizes of 1 MB and 2 MB and includes 640 KB of RAM in all versions. The RA6M3 includes many efficient and unique features, including a TFT controller and CMOS image sensor interface. This video will focus on the Ethernet peripheral. Here you see a summary of the main features of the RA6M3 and also an image of the EK RA6M3 evaluation board that incorporates a J-Link debugger and a large assortment of expansion headers. I will be using this board in the demo later on in this video. So what is Ethernet? Well, according to Wikipedia, Ethernet is a family of wired computer networking technologies commonly used in local area networks or LAN, and it was commercially available or commercially introduced in 1980. Over the course of its history, Ethernet data transfer rates have increased from the original 2.94 megabits per second to the latest 400 gigabit per second transfer rate. Systems communicating over Ethernet divide a stream of data into shorter pieces called frames. Each frame contains a source and destination address and error checking data so that damaged frames can be detected and discarded. Higher layer protocols trigger trans retransmissions of lost data frames. So how is the Ethernet implemented in the RA6M3? The RA 6M3 does not have an integrated uh, physical interface. The, uh, the interface between the RA 6M3 and the FI chip is the Media Independent Interface, MII. The RA 6M3 also supports the reduced Media inter Independent Interface, the RMII that reduces the number of pins required to connect a MAC layer to device to a fire layer device. At the data link layer, the, the Ethernet peripheral, which consists of the Ethernet controller and Ethernet direct memory access controller, provide Ethernet frame processing in accordance to IEEE 802.3 specification. Layers 3 and above are implemented by the TCP IP stack. The Ethernet Direct Memory Access Controller, or EDMAC, makes use of the Direct Memory Access Controller and moves the data between the Ethernet controller and the memory reducing CPU load. The EDMAC is directly connected to the Ethernet controller. Received frames are transferred from Ethernet controller to an area of RAM, pointed to by received descriptors in the EDMAC. A similar operation is performed for transmit frames by moving them from RAM to the Ethernet controller through the EDMAC. If a given frame fits in, into one buffer, it is called a single frame operation. However, if the frame length is larger than the buffer size, the EDMAC performs multi-buffer operations to form the frame and process it. All these actions are automatically done by the EDMAC and buffer pointers are updated as necessary. Now that we have seen the two Ethernet peripherals that make up the Ethernet block, let's take a look at how they all work together. In this animation, system RAM is internal to the RA6M3. If required, however, the RA6M3 can be used with an external RAM, providing larger receive and transmit buffers for high-end applications. When Ethernet data is transmitted, the software driver updates the transmit descriptor control information and writes the data into transmit buffers, pointed to by the transmit descriptors. 
dependent on the length of data one or more transmit buffers and descriptors are used. For example, if the transmit buffers are 256 bytes long and the data length is 500 bytes, two transmit buffers are, are needed. EDMAC then reads the descriptor control information and moves the data from the transmit buffers into its transmit FIFO. This operation is completely under the control of the EDMAC and the CPU is free to do other tasks. The Ethernet controller takes the transmit data from the EDMAC's transmit FIFO, creates a complete Ethernet frame and transmits to it to the physical device through the media independent interface. The Ethernet controller confirms with IEEE 802.3 Ethernet standard when transmitting the frame. Reception of uh, an Ethernet frame is the same but in reverse. The received frame is checked against its destination address and any CSE errors. If the destination address matches and there are no CSE errors, the frame is put into the EDMAX receive FIFO. The EDMAX then, demoves the, then moves the received data into received buffers pointed to by the received descriptors. The length of received data determines the number of received descriptors and received buffers used. In summary, the Ethernet MAC controller features an IEEE 802.3 compliant MAC, which provides indep media independent interface, the MII interface, and a reduced MII interface, or RMII, for connection with an external PHY, which can be optical, twisted wire, or more. The controller supports full duplex and data transmission rates of up to 100 megabits per second, and it features a dedicated Ethernet DMA controller, which is used to transfer data between memory and the Mac without CPU intervention. It also supports magic packet detection and wake on LAN functionality for a remote activation of peripherals. This functionality is particularly useful in the Internet of Things or IoT applications. Wake on LAN feature allows low power system operation. Upon detection of a magic packet, the rest of the MCU is activated. A magic packet is, is a broadcast frame with 16 repetitions of the destination node's MAC address. A synchronization clock can also be generated in compliance with IEEE 1588, Precision Time Protocol, or PTP, enabling so-called real-time Ethernet. In that case, a PTP-compliant PHY must also be used. Example programs. Well, Renesis provides example, an example project bundle for all of their RA evaluation boards. These demonstrate most of the peripherals on the device. The Ethernet peripheral is also included. Here we find eight versions covering both client and server in IPv4 and IPv6 modes. In addition, Renesis has provided me with a web server example project. I will further detail the web server example. The Ethernet web server example project for the EKRA6M3 evaluation board demonstrates the functionality of the Ethernet peripheral in hosting a web page. An HTML website is stored on an external USB stick and referenced to host the website. Having the HTML stored on a USB stick makes it easy to modify and deploy an updated website. I will now demonstrate this project. I have now imported the example program for the EKRA6M3 web server example into eSquare Studio. And we see here the uh, BSP tab for eSquare Studio and I see that uh, we're using FSP version 3.1.0. The board is the EKRA6M3, which brings up the correct part number, of course. And then we're using the free Atos real-time operating system. If we then go to the stacks tab, you see that we're using free Atos TCP IP stack. Also the free Atos file allocation table and also the uh, mass storage USB 
driver. If I now compile the code, you see that it comes up with zero errors and zero warnings. And if I download it to the target, and switch to the debug mode. We're ready to run. First we'll have a look at the uh, target board, which is the EKRA6M3 board with a USB stick connected to uh, a USB output port. Renesis has provided a provided a small uh, cable, interface cable, from the micro USB connector to a full size USB so that we can use a standard USB stick. The green cable is uh, the Ethernet cable connected to my home network and the other black cable is the debug connector going from the J-Link on the evaluation board to my development environment, the eSquare Studio. If I have a look at the code, I can see that once the program starts running, it'll reference the USB stick at this location. Web SRC slash index.html, HTM. So we'll start running it, but before I run it, I'll want to open a live trace console window and to show you how you can find that is you go to renesis views then select debug and then live trace console which opens up this window down below and then on the far right you configure it the core site itm settings to uh, reference port zero which you see indicated here on the left. And you click on this button to enable the trace. And if we now click on resume or press F8, we'll get the output message, including which uh, port will be referenced. And in this case, that's IP address 192.168.0.125 Now if we open a in the Windows Explorer and type in 192.168.0.125 5 slash index HTML. We'll see the contents of the USB stick, which is the index.html page. And we'll have a look at a sub page, which I included, referencing the a nice picture of the array going back and now my own personal page which references our beautiful tiger going back to the front page all of these uh, images are hyperlinked going to the uh, Renesis RA website or to the Avnet Silica site or the free Atos site where you can download a lot of information. You can easily uh, change the website by uh, 
modifying the contents of the uh, USB stick as long as you include the uh, uh, reference location web src slash index.html or alternatively you can modify this website in the code recompile it download it to the target and off you go this concludes the uh, demonstration of the program download the web server example and implement these features in your next application this example is included in the downloads together with the presentation in closing I would like to thank you for your attention and if you have any questions or recommendations for future videos please don't hesitate to contact me on this address thank you for your time